behind the screen. Okay. Yeah. Start? Yeah. okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Virginia Harger, chairperson of the Shelton Planning and Zoning Commission. Today is Wednesday, May 24th, 2023, in the special meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission being conducted in the Shelton City Hall Auditorium via Zoom and through a phone link is hereby called to order at 6.01 p.m. This meeting may be also viewed live and remotely on YouTube. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and I invite all those at home to do the same. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, God, is justice. Thank you, everyone. I'll start off with a roll call of the commission. Please uh, verbally indicate that you're present when your name is called. Commissioner Kelly? Present. Commissioner Laskos? Present. Commissioner Parkins? Present. Commissioner Motto? Here. Commissioner Tickey? Present. Um, myself, Commissioner Harger. Mr. Rossetti, our administrator. Miss, uh, Mr. Panico, our consultant. Here. Ms. Vernasos, our recording secretary. Present. Ms. Charbonneau, our stenographer. She elevated. Uh, she'll be coming on. Okay. Uh, okay. And Alexandria is kind of participating. She's, She's in there. Okay. Ms. Castro, our assistant administrator. Present. And Ms. Charbonneau, were you trying to say something? No, no. Okay. Um, just for the record, alternate commissioners Onofrio and Donato are not available for this evening's meeting. And a couple of points before continuing with tonight's agenda. <clears throat> Mr. Rossetti uh, will act as the Zoom meeting host. Commissioners will be able to make comments throughout the meeting. The chair asks that you please identify yourself and wait to be recognized to make sure we're not all speaking over each other and to make sure our recording secretary is clear as to who is speaking. On this evening's agenda, we have the opening of three public hearings and the continuation of another one. This is the protocol for the public hearings. Mr. Rossetti will indicate if any written comments were received from members of the public no later than 24 hours before the start of this, of this evening's meeting to be read into the record. If new material has been submitted since the last time an application was on the agenda, the applicant and or his associates can comment on it. The commission can ask questions during the applicant's comments or at the conclusion of the comments and the applicant and or associates can answer commission questions at the time they are presented or at the conclusion of the comments. New material has been submitted since the last time an application was on the agenda. The public can address the commission on new material submitted by the applicant, but comments are limited to just the new material. The applicant's attorney and or associates will be given the opportunity to address any comments or questions from the public after the last person from the public has been given the opportunity to speak. If the commission feels further information is needed from the applicant, the chair will ask for a motion to continue the public hearing. If a public hearing remains open, the commission is not allowed to make any public comment, discuss any part of the applicant and or his associates presentation or receive any additional information from anyone. The commission feels the applicant and or his associates have answered all questions, have addressed all concerns from the commission and or public. The chair will ask for a motion to close the public hearing. The commission can choose to discuss an application immediately following the close of a public hearing or at an upcoming commission meeting. In either case, the commission will be asked by the chair on how it wants to proceed. There are members of the public who do choose to speak at the point in the public hearing when the chair calls for public comment. The public is asked to note the following. Speaker order is as follows. Elected officials of the city of Shelton, those attending in person, those participating via Zoom, and those participating via phone. Speakers will be allowed five minutes to present comments. Those present in the auditorium need to indicate their name and address on the speaker sign-up sheet on the table in the front of the room. At the time indicated by the chair, those participating via Zoom will need to use Zoom's raise your hand feature to be identified. Those participating via phone will need to dial star nine on your phone. After you are identified by 
Mr. Rossetti, please state and spell your name and your address to assist the recording secretary and stenographer when they are preparing the minutes and transcript of the public hearing. Please direct your comments and questions to the commission only, not to the applicant and or his associates. Comments from the public should address specific criteria of the zoning regulations, the merits of the application, and be new information, not a repeat of comments previously presented. Members of the public are expected to practice appropriate etiquette by being quiet, observant, and respectful. Disruptive attendees may be removed from verbally participating. First agenda item is the opening of the public hearing for application 2309, Teresa Waldron at 161 Quorum Avenue. Uh, Commissioner Armato, could you read the public hearing notice? Sure. Uh, initiation of application 23 09, Teresa Waldron at 161 Quorum Avenue, Spectrum Map 118C, Lot 72 in a CA3 zone for a special exceptions application to convert a commercial unit into a single residential unit. The property is generally bound as follows. Northerly by Main Street, easterly by Howe Avenue, southerly by Myrtle Street, westerly by Prospect Avenue. Thank you. This application was accepted for review on May 10th. On the city's website are the special exception application, floor plan, photo of the building, exterior, and a diagram showing the position of buildings on the property. Um, Mr. Rossetti, were any other reports, materials, or correspondence received within the time period for this application, but had not yet been posted to the city's web website that we need to acknowledge? No. Okay. So is the applicant present? Come on up, have a seat, identify yourself for the record, and please okay. proceed. Okay. Yeah, come on over here, because you're getting picked up with okay. this little gizmo. Okay, so go ahead and state your Hi. name and address. My name is Teresa Waldron. I'm a lifelong resident of Shelton. Go Shelton. I work in Shelton too. Um, I live on Neen Street. Um, I've owned the building since 1997. It was um, a multi-use commercial building. It was originally built in, as a church in 1920. Mm -hmm. And um, and then uh, it's got an apartment existing already in it. Um, and I actually lived there at one point, but um, now I want to take the church portion and turn it into an apartment so that I can get rent. Mm -hmm. So, so, so all of it would be residential at that point. I have a uh, storage in the basement, but yes, yeah. two mm -hmm. two residential. Mm -hmm. Is it a conforming um, apartment currently? Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, parking. Yeah, the parking. So there's two spaces in the back. Um, um, that's the rear of the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So there's a little driveway and then it opens up a little bit. So mm -hmm. it's like an L shape. Mm -hmm. Can I? So the building already exists. The footprint is already there. It's just. I just want to put bedrooms in and a tub. Remodeling. How mm -hmm. many bedrooms? Two. Two bedrooms? Mm -hmm. Yes. And what's the other apartment? It's um, It's got a lot of little rooms. I call it a two bedroom, but it's got like a two bedrooms and a little closet. It's uh, about 800. Excuse me, 800 square feet. The apartment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any uh, other questions from the commission? Okay. Um, so, Mr. Panico, do you have any questions of the applicant? No, everything seems to be in order. Okay. Um, I'll move to the public portion. Um, I ask if there are any elected officials in the city. In the auditorium that wish to address commission doesn't look like there's any. Um, Mr. Zetti, is there anybody uh, participating remotely from the city of Shelton? An official? No. No. Okay. So, is there anyone in the auditorium from the general public that would like to address the commission on this? No, Mr. Zetti. Anybody um, participating remotely on Zoom? that has uh, raised their hand to address the commission. No. Okay, anybody with uh, a phone link doing star nine? No phone, sorry. Okay. Okay, so. so meets the parking requirements though? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right, so if there isn't anything else, Mr. Panico, you have any final comments? No, it's just a matter of uh, following through with the right procedure. Uh, mm -hmm. The only odd thing about it all is that it's, it is positioned right on the property line, so it 
will impact their ability to create any windows, but their floor plan doesn't seem to show any proposed windows, so mm -hmm. it should be okay. Okay, all right. So um, how does the commission wish to proceed? Anyone want to continue or close the public hearing? An apartment with no windows? Yeah, is it, is it, we put two in the back, one in each bedroom oh. um, on the plan. Yeah. So they have an egress and the fire marshal okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. right. okay. And there's one on the that. side that's near the driveway as well. Mm -hmm. And there's also one in the bathroom, which is closer to the street. Mm -hmm. So if they decided, Tony, if they decided to put in windows later, that's not a problem. If for some reason somebody decides to put in side windows. Well, the building inspector probably will not issue a permit for it. Okay. Just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. It's right on top of the other department. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Fire Marshal approved it. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, sure. yeah. Okay. All right. So, does any commissioner want to make a motion to either continue or close the public hearing? Make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay. There's a motion from Commissioner Kelly to close the public hearing. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Commissioner Mato is seconding. So on the motion to close, made by Commissioner Kelly, seconded by Commissioner Mato, I do a roll call. Commissioner Tiki? Aye. Commissioner Parkins? Aye. Commissioner Mato? Aye. Commissioner Lascos? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. And the chair votes aye. How does the commission wish to um, proceed on this particular application? Thank you. Thank you. Let's, 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 let's yeah. get it off the agenda. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, there's seen that there's a consensus for action in this application. Is there a motion to approve the application? A motion for approval. We'll okay, second. motion to approval from Commissioner Tiki, seconded from Commissioner Kelly. So on that motion, is there a roll call? Commissioner Laskos? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Parkins? Aye. Commissioner Motto? Aye. Commissioner Tiki? Aye. And chair votes aye. Motion has passed by vote <laughs> 6 to 0. See Mr. Rossetti. If any of y'all want to come to Spotted Horse and celebrate, <laughs> <laughs> we do. Yeah, but we can. Yeah, we right. do, but we've got business to take care of, unfortunately. <laughs> we, maybe we will take a rain check. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. All right. Second agenda item is the opening of the public hearing for application 2310 25 Summit Ridge. Commissioner Romano, could you read the hearing? Initiation of application 23-1025 Summit Grid RB taping and renovations for Jeffrey and Kimberly Roy at 25 Summit Ridge Road. Assessors map 124, lot 23, in a PRD zone for a special exception application for an addition. Property is generally bound as follows. Northerly by Sawmill City Road, easterly by Fieldstone Drive. Southerly by Cedarwood Lane and Westerly by Bridgeport Avenue. Thank you. Um, this application was accepted for review on May 10th on the city's website of the special exception application, architectural plans, interior plans, site layout, an affidavit from the applicants, and a letter from an abutting property owner. Mr. Rossetti, any other reports, materials, or correspondence received within the time period that uh, were not yet posted to the city's website that we have to acknowledge? Um, yes, this is atypical for us to have an application like this pending. Uh, typically, this is dealt with by zoning board of appeals. Mm -hmm. um, however, we ran this by corporation council. Um, and for this application, we may accept an application for a special exception um, for a use that is technically feasible here and within the board's jurisdiction because this is a PRD, which was a zone change. Uh, the board created the characteristics and limitations of the PRD, and the effect of the board's action will be to modify the setback and the usage for mm -hmm. this application and this parcel specifically. Okay, and, and was that something that Attorney Teodoso conveyed? That's correct. Okay, so this is an opinion of uh, Attorney Teodoso that um, this would be something that the commission would uh, take care of. So is the applicant present? Come on up to the uh, table. And we'll give you a microphone. Thank you. Just bring that around. Identify yourself for the record and your address, please. Hi. Uh, hi. I'm Rob Bria. I'm the owner of RB Taping and Renovations. I'm the general contractor, 78 mm -hmm. Maple Avenue, Shelton, Connecticut, is my address. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the owner, Jeff Roy. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeffrey Roy, owner of the property, 25 Summit Ridge Road, Shelton. Okay. 
So we have the application here, and uh, I think Mr. Zetti's putting it on the screen. So I want you to run through what we are. Do. He's looking to put an in law apartment in for his mother, who is uh, a lifelong Shelton resident, 84 years old, mm -hmm. who can no longer live by herself. I mm -hmm. uh, would like to have her live with him. Mm -hmm. um, so we are asking that you grant us the ability to overstep the property line so that we can put the existing 800 square feet addition onto his home. Are you, are you sure you're presenting that correctly, overstepping the boundary? Well, I'm sorry, I, 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 I want to go over okay. I apologize, All so right. I'm going to say I, I, I am overstepping <laughs> the side. Get to, <laughs> then we get into trouble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so we have the diagram as to the addition. What's that in red up there? Uh, that's the proposed, that's the proposed addition. Yeah. Oh, I see it. Got it. Okay. All right. Very good. Is there anything in particular you want to point out on that? Um, no, I, I think it's um, pretty self-explanatory. The neighbors are are all all okay with it, and um, it's a pretty wooded area, so it's not like we are, you know, making an ISO where we kind of. Uh, the drawing kind of incorporates it into the house, so it looks like it was always there. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be that to get it to fit the space that she needed to live in, mm -hmm. we have to be over that mm -hmm. setback. Okay. And not much for you, setback. It looks like uh, we I, I, it was it, it was the normal setback. Mm -hmm. And, and yes, we're going to eleven. So we're asking for nine feet. Mm -hmm. um, How far to the next property? Um, it's up a hill. Yeah, it's up a hill oh, behind yeah. them. I looked at the Google map. Um, Street view. Uh, okay. When when I did submit it for ZBA originally, um, uh, Alex and I talked about the driveway not being able to be extended, and we agreed to that. So we're okay with the driveway being, you know, where it is now with the basketball hoop would be. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So we didn't, we didn't, we didn't, include, you know, extend the driveway so that the basketball hoop could be further. We kept the driveway where it was. We just put in the building, so the building would basically be, uh, you know, a little bit faster into that driveway. Okay, and then the neighbors that submitted a letter are the ones that are the houses up there on the hill. That one and the one in back further there, the um, the garrison, I believe, mm -hmm. to the back. Okay. Any questions from the commission? On Summit Ridge or Wake Robin? Uh, I'm sorry, they are on Wake Robin. Yeah. Yes, they're at the back of the property. Yeah, so his side yard abuts the rear yard. Correct. And then, mm, correct. Okay. So does this meet our other requirements in terms of the door into the, the in-law? Oh, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, the, the mother-in-law apartment is, the in-law apartment, I should say, is what you require, door into it. Separate. Uh, oh, I meant the not two front doors on the house. No, 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 there's not. Yeah. Mr. Panico, do you have any comments, questions, or concerns? Mr. Panico? He might have had to step out. He did step out, but yeah. I can mute him. Oh, okay. He's muted. He had to step down and just talk. Okay. So he's back. There he goes. He's unmuted. Okay. Mr. Panico, do you have any comments, questions, or concerns? No. As I said earlier, I guess you couldn't hear me, but uh, Alex and I discussed it pretty thoroughly on several occasions. Uh, and there are several different approaches that could have been followed, but it was referred to Corporation Council. And he did come back in uh, with a letter today. And in that, he felt uh, it was a, a unique situation and, and that uh, perhaps the commission could deal with it mm -hmm. as, yeah. as a, a modification of a special exception. Right. Okay. Any further comments, questions, or concerns from the commission? Just uh, so the egress or entrance, one would be in the back and one would be through the existing. Correct. Okay. We shall have a deck off the back and she'll right. go through the that, garage door. The other one is through here. Right. Mm -hmm. The only other comment I would make, Madam Chairman, is if you do decide to move forward and approve it, be sure there's a stipulation that this variance that you're going to be granting is applicable only to this particular lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you for that, Mr. Panico. All right, if there are no other questions from the uh, commission, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. And so we'll move to the public she's, portion. She's just moving this agenda right now. It's like that spotted <laughs> horse idea. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> so, and even says right in front of me, get sign up sheet. But in any event, um, moving on to the public portion, is there any city official in the audience that would like to make a comment? Okay, seeing none, are there any city officials participating remotely, Mr. Rossetti, that indicated that they would like to make a comment? Okay, back to the auditorium. Any members of the general public? Nope, we'll go back to remotely. Anybody by Zoom or through the phone link who've indicated they want to make a comment? No, okay. All right, so is there a motion to close the public hearing? A motion to close. Thank you, Second Commissioner that. Tiki. Okay, there's a motion to close the public hearing. For application 2310 from Commissioner Tiggy. There's a second from Commissioner Kelly. I'll do a roll call vote on that motion to close. Commissioner Parkins? Aye. Commissioner Motto? Aye. Commissioner Lascos? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Tiggy? Aye. And the chair votes aye. And how would the um, uh, commission like to proceed on this application? Yeah. Okay. Right, exactly. So is there a motion to approve? I'll make the motion to approve. With the stipulation With the that the variance, variance only applies to this, to this lot. Property. Okay. I'll All right. That All right. So the motion to approve with stipulation that the variance only applies to this lot. Commissioner Kelly, seconded by Commissioner Parkins. Do a roll call vote. Commissioner Motto. Aye. Commissioner Tiki. Aye. Commissioner Glasgow's. Aye. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. Commissioner Parkins. Aye. And chair votes aye. Motion is passed by vote six to zero. See Mr. Rossetti Thank in the you. morning. Thank you. Well, we will. Thank, Thank you. Her mother will be very happy. Yeah. I'm very happy for her. <laughs> Thank you. You're Have welcome. a great night. You too. Thank you. Thank you. You'd realize it as soon as you're out in the car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The third agenda item is the opening of the public hearing for application 2311, 240 Longfield Crossroads. Commissioner Amato, would you please read the public hearing notice? Initiation of application 23-11-240 Long Hill Crossroads and construction LLC at 240 Long Hill Crossroads, assessment map 51, lot 28, in an LID zone for a special exception to allow a business and professional office. The property is generally bounded as follows, northerly by Forest Parkway, easterly by Long Hill Avenue, southerly by Laurel Wood Drive, and westerly by Bridgeport Avenue. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Amato. This application was accepted for review on May 10th on the city's website of the special exception application, a site plan, a Google Earth photo of the site, a GIS map of the site, and a set of plans showing the proposed interior renovations. Uh, Mr. Rossetti, were any other reports, materials, or correspondence received within the time period for this application, but not yet posted to the city's website? No, be honest. No. Okay. Is the applicant present? Come I on am. Up to the table. Oh. And we have someone here in the audience. Sorry, I'm the applicant. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Mark, hold tight. <laughs> Thanks. All right, and your name, sir? Maurizio Paniccia, MP Construction, I'm a general contractor. And that's spelled M-A-U-R? M-A-U-R-I-Z-I-O. Okay, and last name spelled? P-A-N-I-C-C-I-A. -C -C okay, you're the G G general contractor? General contractor, yeah. Okay, and uh, participating also remotely is? Mark. Uh, yeah. Mark Leonard, I'm the COO of the uh, Photographic Research Organization, who will be the tenant. Okay, very good. All right, so um, what do you have for us? So what we have here is uh, we're proposing a interior renovation to an existing office space and basically bringing back another office space. Mm -hmm. So since this is an all in a light industrial park, we had to go for a special exception in order to uh, get our permit provide, uh, approved. Okay, was there something in the paperwork that referred to um, activity within the building 
were had to do with uh, photography. Photography. Yeah, stuff? they did. Yeah. They're a photography distributor. However, they don't do any distributing through the space. Right. Right. That's all done in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Okay. This space is going to be used for only administrative, marketing, accounting, customer service, photo studio, basically for their own marketing purposes mm -hmm. and storage of that that material housing. So is uh, Mr. Leonard, is there potential that the that open area or somewhere within that space that you'll be leasing, you'll be taking photo uh, doing photography of your products? Yeah, about one half of that open area will be a video studio and still photography studio. And we also perform customer service. Um, so we have all of our products on display so the customer service people can walk up and touch a product as they're working with a customer. So that's what that space is for. Okay. All right. What, what, what is the product? I'm just trying to understand what this business is. Um, if you have a camera, anything that you could attach to a camera, so tripods and filters and flashes and lenses and gadget bags, all those kind of things. Photography accessories mm -hmm. and equipment. Oh, correct. Don't you even uh, go into uh, certain types of bags and... Yeah, we have gadget bags and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mil Milford and and our customers are only family-owned camera stores across the country. So places like Milford Photo. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're actually a cooperative buying group, and so we help enable those smaller entities to be competitive. And part of that is we have our own brand, and that's what the products are that we photograph and display there. We don't okay. sell them to to anybody. It's just for the marketing of it. Okay. And um, no warehousing at this particular location? No. I mean, well, we have uh, oh, for... stuff that, no, nothing that would be no. leased. Yeah, well, we have doing storage stuff. of stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Say that again, Mr. Leonard. We, we would have um, uh, display materials, things like that, but nothing that gets resold, not inventory with a value. Right. Okay. All right. So uh, any questions from the commission for the applicants? How many workers in there? What's your workforce expected to be? Yeah, we offer a three day in the office, two day from home. But if everybody showed up on a given day, we would have 16 people there. Oh, all right. Okay. There's sufficient parking. 125 spaces. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 This is that section this on Long Hill like Crossroads. It has a couple of them, light industrial buildings. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, sufficient. The entire building, sufficient. The What's entire that? 240. No, there's mm -hmm. uh, three other uh, occupants to the building. However, uh, each occupant, uh, uh, they one the first one is Hot Tops. Mm -hmm. uh, they yeah. have like three to In five employees. Yeah. Right. Then there's a uh, courtesy carpet. They have one to three employees. Okay. And then the Digitron has about 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. So even with their 16, I mean, you're not anywhere close to that right. 125 no. spaces. Yeah. I think in the past they had even a more intense use. Yeah, I'm sure they've been. Yeah, yeah I'm so, looking at some of the background yeah, information. That. I, I can't remember the name of the company that was in there, but I yeah, there's a lot of visited different ones. Particular space. It, okay. it was Ant Anton Bauer. They were a battery distribution yeah. company. There's up on the screen. There's a, a Google Street View of what some of the uh, prior tenants used to be. Mm. So and it's the so it's like the front third of the building. About. But the, yeah, yeah, front third of the building. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Panico, do you have any questions for the applicants? No, I'm satisfied with the, the approach and what the product is, and it seems to be consistent with other activities in the area. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Any further comments, questions, or concerns from the commission? Okay, we will go to the public portion. <laughs> Are there any city officials in the audience that would like to make a comment on this particular application? Okay, are there any city officials participating remotely who have indicated that they would like to make a comment on this application? Are there any general members of the public here in the auditorium that would like to make a comment on this application? Anyone participating remotely on Zoom or via a phone link that would like to make a comment on this application? Okay, hearing none, um, is there a Motion to close or continue the public hearing. Okay, motion. Motion to close. okay there's motion to close from Commissioner Motto. Is there a second? That's it. And Commissioner Parkins is second it. So on the motion to close public hearing made by Commissioner Motto, seconded by Commissioner Parkins. 
We'll do a roll call. Commissioner Laskos? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Tickey? Aye. Commissioner Parkins? Aye. Commissioner Motto? Aye. And your votes aye. How does the uh, commission wish to proceed on this application? Same. Move forward. Okay. So, um, Mr. Zetti, we're doing a straight. We don't have anything. No. Okay. All right. So, is, no, no resolution for this. All right. So, is there a motion to uh, from someone to approve the application? I'll make a motion to approve the application. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, motion to approve Commissioner Kelly, second by Commissioner Lascos. Commissioner Tiki? Aye. Commissioner Motto? Aye. Commissioner Pargins? Aye. Commissioner Kelly? Aye. Commissioner Lascos? Aye. And chair votes aye. Motion is passed by vote six to zero. You see Mr. Rossetti in the morning. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm having a productive meeting tonight. <laughs> we'll see you all at the spotted horse. <laughs> Yeah, have a terrific night. Everybody. Go save some seats. <laughs> and Chairman, that was for the other uh, business. If they do a sign, we'll be consistent with what we saw. Um, Mercio, what's going on with the sign? Has that I have no idea. Mark, have you decided with the owner? Uh, what we, you're doing with the signage? Yeah, at, we may not even put up a sign because we don't, we're not relevant to anybody in the world. We may choose to use the monument sign that's there, but nothing that would require any special deviation from what exists. Well, let's put it this way. If you're going to go for a sign, you're going to go for a sign permit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so essentially, if, you're, if, you're, yeah, if you are if, deciding, we, if we opened up without a sign, that wouldn't hurt us. If we put a sign, business won't be affected either way. Yeah, it's not like you take walk-in customers, no. so to speak. So. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Just yeah. note to self, if you do decide to go for signage, you're going to have to get a permit for it. Understood. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. All, All right. Have a good night. Take care, guys. Bye. All right. We'll move on to old business and the continuation of the public hearing for application 2228. Dominic Thomas for Recar LLC and Mianus Holdings. LLC at 704, 712, 722, and 726 River Road. Assessors map 22, lots 1 and 2, and map 32, lots 16 and 17. For modification to PDD number 66 and final site development plans to increase the size of the PDD from 8.645 acres to 11.981 acres, relocate and increase the size of the previously approved restaurant and event facility at 7,000, at a 7,800 square foot office building, reduce the 102 previously approved apartments to 90 apartments and add 35 condo units to the existing PDD site. Um, this particular application was accepted for review on November 9th, 2022. Public hearing opened on January 25th, 2023, and was continued twice to March 15th and April 19th. In addition to the items noted in previous meetings as being on the city's website, new materials have been posted. A revised site development plan, revised architecturals, diagrams showing proposed walkways and retaining walls, a diagram showing the location on the site of the gas easements, and a, a letter from attorney not confirming Stratford's WPCA approval uh, of a hookup from this project to the Stratford sewer system. Mr. Rossetti, any other reports, materials, or correspondence received within the time period for this application, but not yet posted to the city's website that we need to acknowledge for the record? I know there were some documents dropped off in our office this afternoon. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at those yet. Dominic, were those posted online? Anything that you dropped off today? Everything that I dropped off today was posted online and identified by the chairman. By the way, Dominic Thomas, Cohen and Thomas, 315 Main Street. I will mm -hmm. state that I received two documents, one as I was leaving the office and one as I was arriving at my home to do it. Uh, one from uh, um, Mr. Mingalello and one from the engineer, uh, Andrew Christmas, who's on, which was a, a landscape plan, a revised landscape plan uh, in conjunction with the revised plans, both of which were uploaded from here, but they were just uploaded within the last half hour. Okay. Um, Attorney Thomas, why are the materials coming in so late these days? Uh, these, uh, the, the plans were done, the revised plans were done last week. The, uh, I the colored up uh, versions to show you the uh, easements, the retaining walls and the sidewalk are just uh, elaborate exhibits to uh, address what's on the uh, revised plans. 
and to respond to the questions. Uh, the things today were just uh, two items that were received uh, late. I think they had to be addressed after the revised plans were done. And the individuals doing them uh, took a while to get it done. But it's our understanding, So, I, and I'll state this for the record, in my conversations with uh, Mr. Rossetti, uh, you have decided apparently to send out this application uh, to um, an engineering firm for an engineering review at this point, and as a result of which the hearing would have to be kept open anyway. So. Okay, um, I'm going to ask Mr. Rizzetti to uh, comment on that. Uh, the city is engaged with some on-call services for large-scale projects such as this one. Um, as you're all aware, it's a large project, and we would like uh, just a professional opinion and review of this. Um, and so we'd like to get the commission's final comments tonight, and then we'll bring this all over to our uh, engineer consultants any final comments back from them and move this along. Okay, so that was an action more from staff. I, I don't recall us ever voting we didn't ask at the commission no, 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 right. to do that. Okay. But the, the hearing will be kept open so that mm -hmm. you may receive the material and see any comments that are made and also be able to try to get it back in time to the applicant so that they may address any of the comments that um, our services have so we're not Pushing this on pretty further. But again, okay. it is a wise decision. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. All right. So, Attorney Thomas, do you want to start with um, reviewing the new materials? Um, I believe, if I correct it, uh, the applicant, uh, Mr. Craw, is in as present in the audience, and he wanted to first uh, review uh, some of the uh, history. He's not in the audience. No. <laughs> okay, then um, I will uh, commence. We obviously this has been uh, we've been going on since November. Uh, we want to generically give you uh, generically give you uh, uh, one of the reasons why we made some of these changes and uh, one of Attorney the issues Thomas, we'd like to discuss tonight. You, yes. Before you go on, do you want to take a moment and try to reach Mr. Crawl? Well, he was going to be there in person, so I am not uh, sure. Uh, he, he might have um, thought he had three items before, and it was going to take a while yeah. to get yeah. there. You want me to try? Yeah. Are you? I can. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we just uh, take a moment? <clears throat> well, if we're going to play. Yeah, but if he's like half hour out, no. I, I do have to say you did proceed with all deliberate speed to get through the first three items, but uh, <laughs> uh, I recognizing what the items were, I did not anticipate you would take yes. that long. He's here, Attorney Thomas. Okay. We'll give everybody a chance to catch their breath. Watch you have a seat here. Catch your breath. Did you just come up 95? Two hours. Oh, jeez. Oh, it, it, there's a party after this. Uh, where is it? Of course. <laughs> I saw there's That's a few things on the agenda. I thought you were going to be a little bit too. I was We've like, been very productive tonight. I guess so. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we just uh, started, okay. and I had just asked um, Attorney Thomas if he wanted to go through reviewing the new materials that were. <laughs> Uh, how would you like to start from uh, big items to small or small items to big? All right. This was a major thing, the easements. Yes. Okay. So why don't you. Um, you have in the plans and we highlighted on a, a special drawing as well. Mm -hmm. The two easements that exist for both. Uh, and Airboy. Let me share screen. Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, no. Okay. okay. Yeah, so this is just reinforcement of what was on a, a different sheet. Right. It, it highlights exactly what was there. Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom, however, though, I, I forgot which commission member did last or requested last time to cut sheets um, through each easement. So at the bottom of that drawing. Tony, Tony. Tony. Oh, yeah, down at the bottom. Okay, so at the bottom of that page as mm -hmm. well, 
are the cut sheets that run through both easements. And as you can see, the majority of the work is in the fill that we'll be putting on the site in the grading plans. Mm -hmm. So if you just come down to the cut sheets, there you go. You can see the dotted line that's shown as the existing grade lines mm -hmm. on both diagrams. And above that is the fill that goes in the areas of where the easements are. So there are no major cuts. It's mostly all being filled. There's no footings. There's no. There's no structure I, whatsoever. I, I think the last time when we talked about it, it was going through a footing or something for a wall. There, there was a retaining wall. Right. There was a retaining wall, but again, that, that, is out. Okay. that retaining wall is out, and it would have been in the fill area. It still wouldn't have required a cut in okay. the area of. Uh, the easement. There's a small cut in the Iroquois shown. Uh, if you look at the very top of the cross section, um, as I'm facing it, right there in that corner, that is a small retaining wall mm -hmm. that would be there. We're looking to try and regrade the driveway a little bit in that area and potentially even eliminate or bring that up. We, I met today personally with uh, Mike from um, Iroquois out on the site just to confirm everything here. And we had a very productive meeting. Everything went very well. And they're happy with these cross sections and understand and that location. Um, I have a term sheet that they've given me that I've signed. I'm waiting for them to countersign now for the easement areas, which basically states that uh, no construction will be done without one of their representatives being on site when any excavation is being mm -hmm. done in the easement, which is, I think, pretty standard for Iroquois. We've done that in the past. And that uh, obviously we're going to notify them once we have the final plans so that they can make any final decisions. And then they're going to go out after we have the final plans approved here and do an actual survey based on our drawings. Mm -hmm. okay, so they want to have this approved first, then they'll, because it costs them money to go out and do it. So sure. they don't want to do it for nothing. Is the gentleman that you met with today, is that the right of way manager? Uh, it is. Well, he's the uh, chief of engineering. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that came up in the April 19th uh -huh. meeting that you would be meeting with the Iroquois right away manager regarding the utility easement. Yes, so, um, it was uh, Michael Kinnick, who is the director of engineering services for uh, Iroquois. Okay. I have his card here. I met with him this morning. Did you, uh, do you still plan to meet with that right away manager? He is, uh, he works for him. Okay. He's under his umbrella, according to what Michael. Guy. Yes, this okay. is the man. Okay. <laughs> this is the guy who, Sends everybody out. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think we're in a good place with the easements and everything that's going on with the both the pipelines. Okay. Any questions from the commission on this particular topic of the easements? Mr. Panico, how about you? Based on my preliminary look at them today, I don't see any issues. Okay. All right. The next sheet that I think was new had to do with uh, site development plan. Was there something on here? There was a number of uh, things for. I had uh, the engineer send a couple of different drawings to you. One was for the walkways because there was a lot of discussion about the walkways. Yeah, and I that's believe okay. that's what you have up now on the screen yep. is the sidewalk exhibit. And and what I tried to do was clarify things so that we were all on the same page. And we actually looked at and added some interior, if you will, to the site sidewalks to make it very pedestrian friendly for concrete walkways and then maintained the pathway. So let me take you through uh, the drawing. The purple Let's start with the green, actually, I think it'd be easier, is all the concrete sidewalk. And what we did is we made sure we had basically on the very southern part of the property in the bottle suede site, working north, concrete paths, so that you can walk basically all the way down the middle of the site between every building on a concrete path in front of the condo building, in front of the rowing club, and then the rental buildings, so that we have access for a very easy pedestrian um, pathway all the way from the buildings themselves. Uh, and we'll call it a sidewalk. Just a minute because we've got some feedback 
chatted yeah. back there's in the speaker. Yeah. Resonating through. So, Dominic or, or Tony, do you have any background noise? Is there a radio on or anything like that in the back? Not here. Not here. Are you, are you still getting it? Once you yeah. stop talking, it stopped. Okay. Yeah, we did coming remotely I'm, or. I'm not hearing anything. Maybe because you have both mics. Is this mic on? Yeah, turn yeah. your mic off. Yeah, yeah, turn that mic on. Just click that button. Yeah, push it down. Okay. Well, let's try again. Okay. All right, I'm, no, no, leave it off. Leave it off. Yeah. Okay. There you go. All right. Oh, you don't need maybe it. Maybe it was because yeah. this one. No, because it's yeah. 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 both. And it was bouncing. Yeah. yeah. We have the group set. Okay. So you were. All right, so uh, uh, we have the uh, added interior sidewalks. So we, we added the interior sidewalk to be consistent all the way through. So primarily where that was added was just north of the condominium building and south of the rowing club there. We connected those peninsulas, if you will, through that grass area so that you can walk through there. And then north of the rowing club and south of the first rental building so kind of down that driveway we added there to connect those sidewalks and then we made sure the sidewalk ran all the way in between the two rental buildings all the way to the north mm -hmm. okay. and then what we kind of did was uh instead of calling it a sidewalk we called it the um process path or uh, exercise path walking mm -hmm. path or we want to look at it and that is what we're showing in the process material Mm -hmm. And that's the, if you will, pink area that goes all the way around the external part of the site mm -hmm. and around and back down towards the river on the north end. So in that area, that'll be kind of the walking path, uh, if you want to call it dog walking area, exercise area. It'll be that process material that people like to walk and jog and run on. So it's a little softer than sidewalks. We didn't want to put concrete there. We thought we mm -hmm. accomplished that in the middle of the site. And then from that very northern point where the cursor is now all the way south, if you will, to the travel lift area, that's all boardwalk. And that will be a synthetic Trex style uh, mm -hmm. material. And that's all boardwalk material. And what we did in we returned a sidewalk from that end corner right there where the cursor is on the very southern part of the boardwalk back through the condo so that you can walk around and guide pedestrian traffic away from the travel lift pit area because mm -hmm. we really don't want pedestrians walking through there on a regular basis. Um, so we turned it and made it so that you can go up that sidewalk, added a staircase there so you can go up those stairs and get up to the front sidewalk or take a left and there'll be a path that will now cut back up to the restaurant um, medical building. So we really looked at trying to make the site very pedestrian friendly, very recreational friendly, mm -hmm. and use the three different media that all the commissioners had asked us to put into the project. So I'm Hopefully we've accomplished uh, what you were asking for. Are here. you going to do good. any kind of um, crosswalk and indicator between striping. there and on the north of the northern end as well? I believe Ruth, they're on the site for the big blown up site okay. plans. We did this just to really show you uh, on a smaller drawing very comprehensively what we're doing all over. But yeah, all the pedestrian directions okay. yeah. will be in place for we've sure. At least three along the road, and then we've got some interior ones for sure. Yes. Yep. Yeah. They're indicated on um, site plan SE1 A and B. You can see the crosswalks there. This is Andrew Kuzmich, the civil engineer. Okay. They, they would be microscopic on these drawings. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, but I, I think this gives you a good illustration of what we did with all of the pedestrian access on the site and public access and walkways. I think it, it's going to be really great. Colored yeah, I think it, last time it was asking, where does this end? Where does this yes. start? And how does this? So I, hopefully this this addressed a lot of those questions and really puts it in perspective. And it looks great. Uh, while we're on this drawing, it might be easy to just on the very southern end of the auto suede site, we eliminated the word proposed, but there are still the two viewing areas. One on that very southern corner of where you, you mm -hmm. see that end where the cursor is now. And then just up above the lower parking lot, right in that area, there'll be some benches and seating there as well for public access to sit and oversee because that 
where the cursor is now, that elevated parking lot will be up above over the car. So it'll still be a nice view out over the river. So those both will be there. And we eliminated, I think somebody had pointed out, it said proposed in the last plan. So that's no longer there. Those are incorporated into the plan. Mm -hmm. We can see that more on a larger site plan if we want when we get there. But just to show you the access that's also been created to get to those locations uh, is very pedestrian friendly as well. Good. All right. How about Good. the uh, proposed retaining wall? Okay. So the retaining wall, we did a little bit of the same thing. Uh, once Tom gets it up, we, we put some colors to it. Is a little harder to see. I'll find that. it. I'll find it. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so on the retaining wall, we did a little bit of the same same perspective just to show you because there's a lot of walls on the site. So we have two basic different treatments. We have a concrete with a stone veneer, so a, a natural stone veneer that'll be going in some areas. And then we have some of it, it's all structural, so structural concrete that'll have a landscape screening. So we're going to do it more with trees and, and uh, plantings. And what we did was highlight the ones that are basically in the open parking lots will get the veneer, the concrete stone, the natural stone veneer over the front of the structural concrete. So all of those red areas that are in uh, the south part of the auto swage between the uh, restaurant and condo building up by the uh, um, access road where we had talked about where it kind of goes into that easement. We're going to look to try and work on that wall a little bit more, but that'll be a veneered wall as well. But we have in front of the restaurant on the corner in front of the condos, kind of where you'll be looking out the windows and seeing things. We're going to do some greens and plantings around that. The landscape plan was also submitted that shows the growth. And yes, on the landscape plan, we made sure all of the native Mm -hmm. There was no non-native species, so uh, we did. So the landscape architect did make a comment that it's very difficult to find native species that are deer proof. That, that's why he uses some non-natives at times, but sure. he did his best. And I said, we don't see a lot of deer on this side of the river, so hopefully it will be okay. They do swim the river. They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. We don't see a lot of them, but we do see they're down them. at the landfill. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a little more densely. Yeah. Down so, there. That's good. Yeah. They're on the hill. Mm -hmm. You've seen them. Okay, is that it for the retaining wall? That that's how we we treated that. There is a cross section there for you know how it's being treated, and then uh, um, Joe Mingalello also included in the architects a little bit of a diagram of the stone. I believe that mm -hmm. was also added as part of the packet, but it's there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions from the commission on the retaining wall? Okay. And then uh, finally, is this the revised site development plan? Is that something that? Well, the I guess the 800 pound grill in the room, I guess, is the affordable component. So what we had done was uh, look to uh, do a study on that and make a proposal to you here this evening. In essence, that shows the two rental buildings that are to the north part of the parcel. Um, what we have done here is we size down the units somewhat mm -hmm. from what we had originally planned to do. Mm -hmm. And we added 10 units to each building. And what we would propose to do is a 10% affordable component. So 11 units of the 110 now uh, rental units that are being proposed on site. And what we tried to do was maintain the footprints that we had previously as close as possible. Uh, they got extended by about call it 15 feet each in length. Mm -hmm. So it was not a, a huge change to the site plan, yet we maintain the quality of the units. And I think that's part of something that has to be considered when you get into these mm -hmm. affordable plans. So the footprint mm -hmm. of the buildings didn't change, just the interior changed. For the most part, part each so building got a little longer, but where they're located on site did not change. Okay. And that position could be, could be accommodated. The it was accommodated, as you can see here, between the easement and then the very north end where we have the fire truck turnaround mm -hmm. on that lower part of the property where we had everything in place. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't have to, you know, reduce really anything for the public, um, as we call the pathway and the switchback and all that we did on that very north end. And all works fine. So all the grades are there. Um, we didn't have to change anything as far as the elevations go the architecture is 
99% the same. Obviously, there's some tweaks to the porches and little yeah. things that uh, Joe Manglello has worked out. But overall, same materials, same building concepts, everything that we had originally brought forward in the original plan is being used in the uh, construction and uh, decor. And every unit is the same. So mm -hmm. every unit, either one bedroom or two bedroom, will have a water view, will have an active waterfront patio. There's no difference in the units. Right, it can't be. Right. Well, yeah. you know, in some cases, what they'll do is they'll make an H design, and mm -hmm. then some of those so in the, the finishes front, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They can do some of that. In this case, um, you know, in the rental world, that's a little bit of a different program because so you added it's, five it's, units to each building. Ten units to each building. Ten units. To it was building. ninety originally. Oh, no, like 110. So you so it's not 90 apartments, so it's now 110. Apartments. 110. 110, yeah. and then 35 condos still? Yes. The condos didn't change. The condos are exactly the same. We kept those a little bit on the larger side in the hopes of, you know, still maintaining a little bit of that higher end kind of product. And, and I think it's important for the commission to have a balance. You know, I think you want to bring the different demographics to the community, you know, those folks that you know, we're out to dinner more often and, and doing those, uh, or using the stores and the shops and different things in the area. And I think if, if we go with an affordable component here, um, you know, more of the workforce line stuff, it, it, it can work well. Um, now, this area is, is definitely not in, in my mind, an A30G kind of program or, or you know, the 60% kind of affordable situation. There's no public transit. It, it's kind of removed from downtown stores, shops. I've been involved in some of those projects and understand a lot of what the draw is for that. But you, um, you requested it. This is what we can put together. And hopefully, if that's what you want us to do, then mm -hmm. we can help you out there. Uh, we based it a little bit on you know the last approval that happened just downtown, where there was the public access, and the commission was um, satisfied with the ten percent with all mm -hmm. the public access, and so we. We're willing to work with you on that and stay consistent. I think that's what you asked. Mm -hmm. I think you said that was then. This was now last time. <laughs> um, hopefully, this gets you um, where you want to be, and you know it's something we can work with. It, it is a challenge. I will tell the commission, um, from my perspective, I'm not really a developer by trade. Uh, you know, I've been a business owner and built businesses and developed properties around them. But, um, you know, when you go to the banks and, and you look at investors and try and get people in, involved in this stuff, it does bring a bit of a challenge, mm -hmm. you know, in those worlds. And I think the commission has been aware of that. So it's not an easy thing when you go out there and they know they have to be deed restricted. You know, anytime the bank sees something mm -hmm. deed restricted, it opens up a lot of different things for some, especially someone like me. I, I'm, you know, a single kind of guy that, a proprietor that has to rely on a lot of resources. So. Um, I will tell you, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, but um, I think we can make it work. It's a challenge program. for us as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't, I, in a city, every city, as a city hard place. especially when we know how desirable Shelton is and for apartments. You know, it's it's hard to um, it's hard to make that balance. Mm -hmm. It is. It is a blend. And, and that's why I understood it. And that's why we put the effort into trying to get this done at your request and, and, and make it happen. I think, you know, in this program, having the condos. Because the marina and the club and things like that really aren't economic drivers. Mm -hmm. and, and the restaurant kind of has to set on its own so you have some rental space, but auto swage kind of sets on its own self. So in this case, having the condominiums that we can sell and hopefully keep on the higher end would help liquidate some of the bank loan, which drives some of the financing. And that helps in this case. So going forward, you know, you may, if some of these projects come up, that balance of mixing the housing um may work out mm -hmm. you know and this was more of a for our, for our new the, plan what would what would we for our new guidance document affordable housing plan what would this hundred and what's it going to be now 110 yeah i think you had talked about 14 when we had last time here mm -hmm. um overall but then you know we so what you had done upriver and figured we can stay consistent and be 10% and ask the commission to do so. I think we can work with that. If it goes much higher than that, it becomes much, much more difficult. Absolutely. Um, on another topic, if yeah. that's if you're done with all that, mm -hmm. um, at the April 19th meeting, you said that you would confirm 
whether or not the CAM would need to be revisited as the auto swage property had increased the property size of the application. Yeah. And Commissioner Parkins asked that any verification be submitted in writing. So what's the current status of the CAM? Um, do you want to speak to that, Tom? Um, well, I, actually, my understanding is the CAM was uh, completed and delivered to the uh, city and it's uh, delivered to the staff and the staff is, uh, it's the city staff that needs to file it with uh, uh, DEEP. Uh, it just, basically, it's already been approved. The CAM was already previously approved with for the uh, prior project. Um, and uh, I, I think Andrew, I'm not sure, I think Andrew's on, that they redid the CAM, updated it um, to include that that property submitted it to the uh, town and I believe uh, to Alex and I believe that has to be submitted to the uh, to the town but there's no issue with the cam uh, mm -hmm. you know again the cam has already been approved for the basic project and adding this other property on it is uh, uh, really just a perfunctory uh, you know sending it back in to update it yeah, we but don't I think want that comes it, it is submitted by the developer it's submitted by the city here. Mr. Rossetti, um, did you get an updated? We do have the updated CAM. We do have the updated CAM, um, revised CAM, I should say, because on the Google Drive, I reached out to Diane, I can't remember her last name, from Connecticut DEP. Diane Ray. Um, so I think I think oh, oh, okay. See, I think you're back. Sorry. Um, no, it's okay. Go ahead. Um, and she said she'd get back to us. Okay. okay. So right. it's as long as they're aware of it, that's fine. Okay. Um, I've got a, a question. It was all of a sudden when I was looking recently at the uh, elevations, somebody caught my eye with the uh, condo buildings and the apartment buildings. And it's uh, what's here as covered walkway. And on the water side, you have decks, but on the street side, Am I correct in looking at the elevation and that there are open looks like corridors? A hotel. It looks like a hotel. That go the same thing. Yeah. yeah. So I was just wondering, where did that come about seeing that we are not in Florida and we have <laughs> different... Um, yeah. Joe, I'll let you talk to that. Joe is the, was the architect. I'm going to have to, uh, to put up the... Uh, let me try to pull up the, you're talking about the renderings, correct? Yeah, the elevations. I have there one. Are, there two. are open decks above grade in those areas for yeah. open walkway. It was um, a couple of reasons. Obviously, yeah, it's a little cold, but we were trying to maintain the windows in the back bedrooms, in the two bedroom units, mm -hmm. to have them Got it. let more light in. Right. So we've been talking about changing that, closing it, going to transom light, doing a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So there's some flexibility in the plan there. Um, I've been back and forth with Joe. We wrestle on a little so bit. So there's yes. no internal hallways. No, no, not no, not on North Building. It's no. Downstairs below grade, you know, in the lower level, the lower two, there mm -hmm. are in interior walkways. Yeah, I think that Good. needs to be looked at. That. I think that it's, it's easy to close. It's not yeah. a hard thing to do. Yeah, it's just, just a matter of that if somebody is, they have gone up in the elevator, they've gone out either way, and they're in this open area, and you've got inclement weather, so because it's covered doesn't really protect you from the elements. If you've got kids or something or groceries that you're carrying, sure. I just said, hey, that's uh, if it was Florida, yeah. okay. but I don't know about Connecticut, so. So you'll look into that. Then. Yes, sure. Okay, very good. Can I ask on the, um, on the apartments again? You, so you went from 90 to 110. Did you add a floor? No. No. Said, yeah, we went out. No, we just, we we reduced the size of the units. So it brought the footprint smaller. And then we added on. Uh, the building designs are very modular. Yeah, so each yeah. unit's a block. So we were able to build those blocks onto the end. So we didn't go up in the height. So how do um, you know the measurements you went out or this gel? Maybe? Um, the, the, each building grew by about 15. Okay. It looks like it says 278, 275. The overall length, correct. Yeah. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. So to Commissioner Tiggy's point, it's not that 
added a floor, you just put an exactly. extra unit. Yeah. <clears throat> I have up on the screen now, can you see the, these are the floor plans of the apartment? Right. Can you see them? Yeah. Yes. I think we're all set, Don. We're going to take a look at, you know, the enclosure of the front porches on those uh, units. Okay. Well, I, I didn't, didn't know whether they wanted to see the floor plans is the way they're, this is the way they changed to add the units. We have them here. And, uh, yeah, the the prior approval was for 102 units. We, we were reducing it to 90 with the condos, and then this increases the apartments to accommodate the affordable up to 110. Mm -hmm. The increasing of the length still does not encroach into the easement, correct? Oh, absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. But we, we were able to just tilt the building a little bit and bring it a little south on the first rental building. And then the one to the north, we were able to move it a little bit further north and still keep the fire truck turnaround, everything at grade, and still maintain the courtyard in between the two buildings. So there's a nice space and a view corridor through there and a nice corridor. Uh, in the landscape plans, you'll see the courtyard in between was designed, we decided to eliminate the pool and we're gonna put in some nice pergolas and uh, fire pit kind of thing and sitting areas that'll look out over the water you rather than have the pool. pool. So yes. I, yeah. I, I, I was looking for it. I was gonna ask, that was yeah. gonna be one of my We questions. decided to eliminate the pool. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, yeah. 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 I think that's a good way to go. It just became yeah. too seasonal for use. Exactly. And this way, True. the courtyards yes. are, yeah. well, okay. there was, like you said, there was a different time. Yeah, you know when we looked at having the pool. Do you have a dog walking area? The whole outside will not Sorry. be dog no. prohibited. So we actually even put out the little green bag dispensers at the Greenwich facility. So yeah, good. We like pets and kids. We try to keep an eye on, <laughs> keep it safe. Do you have pets in the apartments? We have not got to that point. I can't say, but it would probably be some sort of size limit. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. is the way they kind of go around it nowadays, but. You know, maybe certain floors, certain units, yeah. you know, you try and do a pet friendly area or however that works out. Have you done that before? Um, I've never done uh, this many rental units in one building, mm -hmm. you know, set up like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a little new to me and that's yeah. why I'm you know, looking I also for- a hard thing. Mm -hmm. We all love our dogs, but you know, if you have a barking dog next, we're being asked to do and the, the bark collars <laughs> that they don't get zapped up when they hear the sound, that it then they, they stop right away. So whatever. But anything else for us, Mr. Carl? Um, I think that's about it. Uh the dumpsters were the only other thing that had come up. Uh, I think Mr. Panico had mentioned that at uh the last meeting. So we uh made a little dumpster containment area there's really only one open dumpster all of the which is outside right now the back of the rowing club on the site right. so we using some of the same treatments we're using on the building so it'll blend in uh we moved it so it's not doesn't need its own retaining wall or anything anymore and it's in a great location it'll facilitate both the marina and the rowing club so we'll be able to empty our trash cans there and then the dumpster that was shown out in front of the restaurant, uh, Joe Mingalello kind of came up with a creative plan to talk the dumpster. And I don't know if we have it on a site plan up. If we can get the site plan up for the um, restaurant building down. How large is that restaurant by the square foot? It's about 7,000 square feet in total on the floor. So. Yeah, because there's outdoor, if you look at the floor plan, there's the outdoor patio part. Mm -hmm. So that's included in the overall square footage. So it's mm -hmm. that the whole rectangle, but mm -hmm. the whole back side and, and north side of it's all open. So okay. right in the corner where the dumpster is shown now, it was showing out in front of the uh, restaurant building, if you will. What we're going to do is build it into between the retaining wall and the marine storage on the lower level and kind of talk it a little bit around that corner. And then there'll be a dumpster chute to come down actually from the restaurant that'll mm -hmm. go into that dumpster. So it'll be hidden in the retaining wall. So it'll be screened very, very well. So I think that'll that'll work out well. Those are the two dumpsters. And uh, I think that's uh, the last thing that I had here. Um, I think we labeled everything that you asked us to label and change. So yeah, I think, Everything that I had here, uh, concrete curbing was another thing. I'm sorry, so we did 
identify, took out the asphalt mm -hmm. curbing and identified the concrete curbing all the way through the site, okay. wherever there was that curbing. All the fire, uh, the fire marshal's concerns? Yes, uh, the last fire marshal concern was, uh, Dom, can you pan north just a little bit? Was in front of the uh, condo building, right there, Dom, and right in front of the condo on the very southern end of that parking area, we, we did lose a couple of parking places. We we're able to move the parking a little bit further north, but um, just pan west a little bit, Don, bring us to the front parking lot right there. You can see where there's the no parking fire lane on oh, yeah. both the east and west side of that parking area. That was something that the fire marshal uh, had said that we needed to add because we were more than 150 feet from the access driveway to the north. So mm -hmm. right from where that stop sign is, right there, right there we're about 200 feet. Okay. Uh, so we had to put in this turnaround for him. It doesn't look that great in front of the building, but um, he required it, so mm -hmm. we put it in. What about that long expanse of parking that Spanica was concerned about? That we we about? added uh, an island uh, that was up in the uh, Across from the rental buildings, across. Mm -hmm. Right, Andrew, we had put in the island. Yep, up we there. put one island on the um, in between the two rental buildings on the east side of the, the parking. Mm -hmm. We broke yeah. it up here with the curb. We got the entry, and then somewhere in here, there it is, uh, right mm -hmm. across from the driveway, right in front of the buildings. We added that island in there, and then um, rework some of the, uh, the lighting and things on the landscape plan to make everything fit. So. Okay. We did break up that long stretch that was there. Okay, Mr. Panico, do you have any? Here is the landscape plan I, that I that I just I received later today uh, and just uploaded recently. Okay. The revised that's, landscape plan. That's something that we'll have to do outside of the, the meeting, um, and that we the commissioners will look at it. That is such in a a small. Kind of the view that it's it's hard to sort of pick out. Yeah, you gotta like individually do yeah. blow up, so. blow things up. So, um, but so now that that's uh, on the website, then we can. Uh, we apologize for that. that. That should have gone with the engineering plans, and that was maybe yeah. even my fault that I didn't get it all included. But uh, that should have came in earlier, uh, early last week, and for some reason it didn't get in the package. Okay. But so, Mr. Panico, do you have any uh, comments, questions, or concerns? Well, I'm, I'm sure I will have right off the top of my head. I don't have anything in particular, but there's a couple of areas I really want to look at. Um, okay. I wanted to ask Mr. Crawl, uh, let's go back to that area with the uh, fire department wanted that space at the end of the parking court in front of the condo building. Yeah, it's, uh, it's right here. Right there, right. okay. Isn't there an alternative to do a hammerhead type of turnaround without having all of that striped out space that people are going to encroach on anyhow? Well, I, I think anywhere you do it, whether it's a hammerhead or this, but unfortunately, um, to the west side of that, you see that retaining wall that's there. That wall already is relatively high. I think it's about 10 feet high um, in the middle of the wall. We needed that to retain the upper driveway, if you will, coming in, the access drive. So there was no way for us to, to give what they required, as we had done on the north side of uh, the lower mm -hmm. driveway. We mm -hmm. wanted to, and we looked at it several different ways, Tony, but um, unfortunately, this was the only way we can come up with. We, can, we tried to do the turn further into the bank but it started to make it difficult for us to get the stairs and the sidewalk. It was like a give and take all over. And it was a matter of which way worked best. And this just seemed to at least stay within the same shape, if you will, of the building and in the parking lot, we can plant some trees, you know, along the, the end of the parking lot and try to make it not look. Uh, it's more a case of trying to monitor those spaces. <laughs> You know, people come home and they're going to see the parking lot is essentially full. And, oh, here's a strike space. Look, I can just park in the edge of the strike space. <laughs> uh, it, they're yeah. going to be very difficult to, to maintain. But that's that's not our that's not our concern right now. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to see 
that if you can just shift that a little bit to the right so that we can look at that courtyard between the end of the condominium building and the uh, commercial building, the other way. Yeah, right, that's good, right there. Uh, that area where you introduced the uh, the, re the uh, dumpster enclosure, and I guess you dropped it at a different elevation. I think those are all positive steps, but I need to look at it a little bit more carefully because quite frankly, I had a lot of concern. Without that, you would have you would have like a, a 30 to 35 foot high wall there, and that was not gonna be aesthetically very pleasing. Uh, this is going to break that, and I, that that's a big plus. But I just want I need, I need to look at it a little more carefully. I may need to get a little more detail from you in that area. But, okay, I know uh, Joe Mingalello worked on it. We can get you some detail. We okay. were aware of that wall, and that's why we added the stairs and stuff there yeah. to kind of break that wall up and again make it more pedestrian friendly. So I think it'll work. Now, unfortunately, yeah, that wall. Uh, what what is that? Uh, area where the hand is situated is that a driveway no it's just the uh, service access that goes into that north stair on that building that'll probably be predominantly used for deliveries and things for the restaurant okay so it's just shown wow. as a wider path as wide as the double doors and then a little bit to give them some room as, as a way of minor detail there ought to be some pretty good protection between that and the drop off there is a detail tone, I believe, that uh, Joe Mingalello did for the railings or the fence tops that will be going on all of the walls. Yeah, it needs to be more than just a pedestrian railing, though. It needs to be something that can stop a vehicle. <laughs> so we'll we'll take a look at it. Okay. And then, then the, only, the, only other, the only other concern, when you were going through the, the walkway system, the one thing that, that hit me was this – this one particular five foot wide process path, path that connects the residential component to the restaurant medical building. I would I would think that you would want to encourage a lot of walk in activity from the units to the restaurant. And I'm not so sure that that's a good place to put a process path. I'm kind of my preference would be to see a concrete path there. But that's a minor thing. Yeah, it was, um, to be honest with you, Tom, we went back and forth on that, uh, and it is a bit steep, and we were just afraid with some of the ice and... Oh, okay. It, it, with I, I didn't look at the grades of it. Yeah, so that, and, you know, we didn't want a kid taking a skateboard down that thing. Um, That's so, true. <laughs> there, so we felt that the process was a safer and, and just productive material. That we could do. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Mr. Panico. Any uh, I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of other comments, but I'm still trying to get my arms around it. That's fine. We have time because of the engineering Would review. You have a, like a handyman or a superintendent living on the premises with so many rental units. Um, we have not put in an actual handyman unit yet, but um, could we? Uh, I'm sure it may come into play, especially with the affordable units. You know, we've I know that where I've been with it in the past where there were multiple units that we did work it out with one of the folks that wanted the affordable that they were going to be on call for emergencies and things. So it tends to work out pretty well with folks like that because they tend to be firemen or police right. or you know handymen or guys that are pretty good with their hands and right. things like right. that. So okay. usually they'll you know you give them extra things and they're happy to be the person on call. Mm -hmm. And then you always have, obviously, your yeah, services, your property management crews. Yeah, that's a good approach. Okay, I'm going to open it up to the public. So is there anyone here in the auditorium that would like to comment on this particular application that is an elected official? Uh, seeing none, Mr. Rossetti, anybody re uh, participating remotely who's an elected official that wants to comment? No, okay. Uh, back to general public in the audience. No one, anyone from the general public via Zoom or through the phone link? No, okay. All right, so um, any final comments, Mr. Panico? No, I'm, as I say, I'm sure there, there are gonna be a few. Hopefully they'll be all minor though. Okay, all right. Last call for any comments from the commission? 
All right, then uh, is there a motion to continue the public hearing? Motion. motion from Commissioner Kelly to continue public hearing. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, Commissioner Lasco says the second. So on the motion to continue the public hearing made by Commissioner Kelly, seconded by Commissioner Lasco, so do a roll call. Commissioner Tickey. Aye. Commissioner Parkins. Aye. Commissioner Motto. Aye. Commissioner Lascos. Aye. Commissioner Kelly. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Motion is passed six to zero for a continuation. Do you have any idea how long the uh, review takes? I'm waiting to hear back. Uh, okay. You know, pushing them to get it turned around so we can put this on a hopefully a June meeting. Okay. Good. But then, of course, you know, we got to make sure we give them time. We might get it in June, but Rick might not be able to get his team to turn it back. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, seeing that there's no other item on the agenda, Chair declares this evening's meeting is adjourned as of 7.22 p.m. Thank you, everyone. You guys are efficient tonight. Right? <laughs> Chair wants to get a drink tonight. I guess. I will watch the Yankee game. <laughs> I may be postponed. They were having some rain down there. Yeah. Oh, last <laughs> Came yeah, back so last night. Started Bottom of the tenth. Yeah, that was a big game. Well, ninth is when eight judges. Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you all. Have a good night. Enjoy Take your care. Party. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Why are you not as active as any city official? Because I got. Never get it. That's when they have time to do it.